สวัสดีครับ Hello again We meet again This is Chef Pan w a l a g o o n From Thai Essence I'm a chef instructor Cookbook author And former the restaurant owner oh, Former the restaurant owner This lecture is number 7 It's about Thai ingredients So we're going to talk about herb, spice, sugar, salt, condiment, curry, and more. And uh, go into the piece of food, exotic ingredients, manufacturing flaw, and savory technique, and everything about involve the ingredient that we do in Thai cooking. And there. Yeah. Let's go. Vamos a ver. Yeah, Spanish. So the ingredients. It can be anything. Dry ingredient, fresh ingredients. It's all about the ingredients. So we're going to talk about the herb, spice, sugar, or the sour. You know, the salt and salt, soy sauce, oyster sauce. Thai curry, manufacturing flour, you know, savory technique, fresh ingredient, exotic ingredient, and dessert food. There's a lot of topic to cover, but I will try to do the best I could. Okay, let's see. Uh, pretty much, you know, in in Thai cooking, we use a lot of herb to do the cooking because the herb it help, you know. Body function well, you know, neutralizing, you know, nurturing, healing, preventing. That what is herb for, good for in Thai cooking. You know, it come from the root, come from the leaf, come from the flower, come from the seed. You know, come from the pot, the pot. You know, the the, the seed pot, and you know, the flute, those kind of things. The pedema, herb, it, anything that has medicinal property in that exits in, you know, the topic, like Southeast Asia, especially the Thailand in the equator. We have so many fruits, root, vegetable, herb, those kind of thing is so many. It's abandoned of it. So then the Thai people know how to use them well. And this is all about herb that come from the be used in Thailand we got ginger, this is rice salm, this uh you have ginger here, you know, you have this another target ginger the this rice salm, this galangal here, you know young peppercorn is still green, you eat them raw like that, cook with it. So Many, many things that a lot of foreigners don't know, but the Thai use them, I mean, extensively. Just every dish in Thai food have herb in it, okay? And the spice, spice, everybody knows spice because it's, it's, it's spice come from Indonesia, and so the English it's take it there, Marco Polo, they take all this spice to the Europe, and then the Europe. The Dutch get a hand of it, and then they, they import, export, whatever they do, and then everybody know that people spy. It, 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 you name thing, people know, because it's, it's common now. But the herb difference, okay? Because this is you got star anise, you got uh, cinnamon, you got dry chili, you got cardamom, you know, all these things. So it pretty much everybody have it. So around the world they're using the spice. This is a refinery process, you know, refinery that, that uh, for the sugar cane. So what happened? Uh, it, it is a full chemical that involves you phosphoric acids, the weak acid. 
that it come from the sugar cane when they burn them. So when they when they harvest them, they have to burn the leaves. That what when the, the burning is have the, uh, become a phosphoric acid and it's stick it in a you know sugar cane you know the stem the body and then after that they use the sulfur sulfur dioxide you know in order to clean it to make it with uh, uh, to make it white you know when after it white and because when the sugar is white, it, the structure is weak, so and they falling apart easily. They cannot make the grain easily, so they add uh, calcium uh, hydroxide in the, in the, to get hardening. So that when you reaching the powder that way. After that, if uh, they want the brown sugar, white sugar, you want a brown sugar, then they add molasses back into the system. How the thing work is what? They have the sugar cane, and then they press it, and then they heat it. So they cut the molasses, they skim the molasses out, you know, the, whatever the imperfection that come with it, with the, shoot, the top of sugar, whatever the sulfuric acid and all the, the goody in there, and they, they took it out separately. And then after that, they refining, they clean it. They clean it and they, it become graduate. After that, they polish it. And then they polish it, and now either they sell with a white sugar, if the brown sugar, they add molasses back into the system. So mostly when I use it, I don't use white sugar, I use brown sugar. So it, this way, it, 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 for us, you got, for me, the way I see, you got four, five, six, you know, you got one, two, three, four, you got five process to put it there and, you know, heat it up, you know, it kind of, when you put the heat into the system, uh, Eliminate a lot more, you know, the toxins now. So because the 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 thing that have, you know, imperfection, that what it kind of reduces it out. The more heat you put in there, the process you go, it kills a lot more thing in there. That's the way I see it. So if you talk about what in molasses, the like molasses is thick brown to side up the obtained from raw sugar, that's what I just explained it. It's it easy to see now, it, you know that they have a toxic from here, toxic from here, toxic from here. By the time you add it, you got three toxic in there. That's why uh, sugar cane, it caused a lot more problem. So the better off to stick with, you know, the palm sugar, real palm sugar, the soft. Where did you the sugar come from sugar come from from many places from flower from tree from fruit from in, insect in, insect net you know and from root vegetable so they they come from every part you know so the insect net is pretty much you know from the honey they will refer to honey so the sweet net is palm sugar brown sugar white sugar honey and fruit and vegetable that what is the the thing that we use in Thai cooking. The less of it we don't like a molasses, maple syrup, or agave, you know, corn syrup. We don't use that in Thai cooking because it's it, it's not we not get used to it because we never get into due to it because it comes other part of the world and people don't do molasses or maple syrup in Thai cooking. Most of Thai cooking the palm juice brown sugar, white sugar, honey, fruit and vegetable that contain the sugar. So because all these things, molasses, all these things, it doesn't suitable with Thai cooking because when you cook, it will change the ingredient, you know, change the taste, you know, those kind of thing. So it doesn't really, you can maintain the integrity of Thai cooking. So that's why this is, you, you don't see people using that at all. So I let the people come from, they do fusion, they tie this, tie that, but I don't know, we don't use that. It's a classical Thai cooking, this is all we use. Okay. And about the sour, the sour is, 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 is a lot of people think it's sour, it's only the vinegar. <laughs> you know, 
or lamb, something like that, but it's a lot more in Thai cooking. You got, you know, the dish is tamarind, the youth is already ripe or young. So this is all equally sour, but the young one is sour. And this is another fruit that is sour, they call it gum, I don't know what in English is. And you have mangoes, you have rosella, this is another Thai fruit there, there you have papaya. All these have sour within itself, pineapple, it leaf, this is, this is a, a tamarind leaf. It's a lot of sour leaf that we use in Thai cooking. And even egg ant, egg ant is sour, that is a, one of the that it come from northeast and the people like to eat it. This is a red ant on a mango tree. You, know, you got a giant and they, they make salad out. So then you have, you know, star food, you have orange, you got, this is, this is a, a coffee lamb flute, and then uh, many exotic fruit. And then you have the two things that uh, man made is uh, vinegar, you know, regular vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and this is a white vinegar that we cook with it, clean with it. There's a lot of things going on you know, to using that Thai people using for a lot of things with this kind of white, like a distilled white vinegar. So now this is the sour to be used, you know, in Thai cooking. Okay. Then you talk about the fish sauce. Fish sauce is, is a lot of misconception about fish sauce. Fish sauce is practically salt, adding the flavor. You know, it, like a, you have the rock salt and the sea salt, right? The rock salt, you see Himalayan, this is like a Himalayan rock salt. It's have, you know, red color, have some kind of early, some, you know, goody in there that's more expensive. And you have that is so that the animal eat, you know, you go rock so they're not from the ocean. They used to be an ocean long ago, and then, but all the thing is rock salt. But the fish salt, fish salt come from many, many, many type of animal that they use. And usually they specifically used for that. This is the, this is the enchavi. In Thailand, about four or five different enchavi in there. So that is a small little fish that they, you know, boiling and then they ferment it and after that they extract the flavor out. And then they add with the sea salt, you know, add a little bit more sugar to balance it to not not have the jumping head all is salty. You get if you have the salty, a little bit of sweet at the end, that pretty much fish salt. If you have Vietnamese fish salt, Vietnamese fish salt is not intense like the Thai fish salt. Because they are my mild they specifically they use for salad or dipping salt or kind of thing. They're not too fragrant, they're not pungent smell. So they very my aromatic, they're more expensive too. They're good for doing the sauce and doing the salad, but it's not good for cooking because they don't give enough salt to really, to balancing the taste. So just be aware of that. And then some that you trim only, they just fermented trim, the same thing, they use quail, they use squid, they use oyster, they use crab. So all these things, it come from different size, different brand. It's a Thai band, it's only four or five of them. But the one that I use, I use a squished one because I think they have uh, very good aromatics and then uh, it's good, you know, salt content. So pretty good for, really good for Thai cooking. But they come in different size, different shape. You get a small in one, that one when, when you traveling so you take it or you don't cook with it. We usually do to put it to make them sauce something little big. The small side pretty much when you travel you take it with you. But they will more likely they will break but you can buy somewhere else. If you cook it at home you buy this small one and you don't cook them that much. If you cook it a lot if you cook it a lot to buy the big one. It's if you last you good you know two, three weeks. And if you you use it, you open it. If your house is cold, it's okay. If you count it hot, you know, just cover the lid and put it in the refrigerator. 
And if they turn black, that means uh, they have too much oxygen going in there, and then it will come darker color. And if you see the crystal, uh, you know, uh, in the bottom of the of the barrel inside, you know, that means it will become crystal, and your uh, fish oil is not good anymore. It will become really salty. So to be careful to throw it away cheap. You know, the lot, the lot like this, the lot bottle like this, it, it cost you a lot two dollar to a dollar fifty, two dollar to one seventy five, depending on where you get it. They're not expensive because they sell a lot of them. More to Thai household, you know, like a, they got two bottle to four bottle a month easily. For me, when I do the restaurant, it's go a case a month easily to 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 do all those. So it, they're not expensive, but it's good. It's just tie out with several brands, but it's a, if you like the one that you like, you know, just keep that one and learn to perfect it when you do balancing the tape. Okay. And the soy sauce, a lot of people the soy sauce. Oh yeah, soy sauce. You have to understand that you have Chinese soy sauce, Japanese soy sauce, and Thai soy sauce. The Chinese soy sauce, they have light version, dark version, and thick version, you know. But everything is salty, salt, 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 and salt, okay. That's why when you eat Chinese food, you pretty much have all the soy sauce and you said a lot of salt. It can become really salty if the people doesn't be careful when they cook it. So that is light, dark, and thick. If you go to Thai, they have the white, is the thin one. That is salty. And then you have the black one, it's like a mild and not too much. And the, it pretty much have more like a black color. It's another uh, tanny taste in there. And then you have a sweet soy sauce that you got the white one, the black one, and the sweet one. The white one, is mostly they call thin soy sauce, but it's, uh, a, if you ask the really Thai people, they say, oh, white soy sauce, or black soy sauce, or sweet soy sauce, you know. Like, siu uh, khao, it's white soy sauce, siu dam, the black soy sauce, then then siu uh, wan, the sweet soy sauce, that's different. And the principle is different, and the way it used is different. So that understand the the Thai soy sauce is stand out. It is it, not the same as Chinese soy sauce, but it's almost similar. But it it have its own uniqueness to easily balancing the taste. If you use the Japanese soy sauce, it's the same thing, but it's salt like Chinese, but they have umama taste, they have light, they have dark, they have more delicate taste. But because they eat with a lot of raw, raw fish, it's different. When you try to use the Japanese soy sauce to cook Thai food, it doesn't go with it because it, just, it doesn't design for it, you know, because the, it's a little bit lighter, they're not too heavy duty like the Thai one. So, be careful when do you if you can find the Thai soy sauce, use the Thai soy sauce. They're cheap. They're not expensive like the Japanese soy sauce. Okay, if you see if you see the cap, you know, uh, the cap the white is like a, you know the white cap the thin soy sauce, and then you have the black cap the black one in the brown tip. You yeah, pretty much standard that they have and sweet is always blue, so pretty much. You see the sticker, it will be different, but uh, if you cannot see the sticker, you can see the top, you can tell right away which one is which. So, in, in Thai soy sauce, usually I, I carry all these, and they have a spare, or we have spare. I buy things to, because we have a lot in the restaurant. At my household, I always keep two of each. Just in case when I cook something, I use this one call a lot more of the thing. But the white soy sauce is always go first. And then uh, sweet soy sauce, black soy sauce, once a while, you, know, you can use them. Not too many ingredients call for it. Okay? 
Now it's oito sauce. The oito sauce is uh, the component is like uh, they do the same thing. They ferment the oyster, they extract the flavor, and have salt, sugar, and thickening agents, and have preservative. The thickening agent did what a lot of the American people that are aware of, oh, it's soy, it's uh, uh, oh, oh, what do you call it? it it organic, of course, it's organic because everything is just pure natural process. And that's the problem with the gluten free because of the, uh, the thickening agents. The Taiwan, they use tapioca, that FI they know. So, if I let some company that try to mimic, they try to do the youth wheat, you know, that's why. A Chinese youth wheat, the the other company, I I don't think the Japanese is somebody else. They, they add the wheat in there to become thickening agent. That's why they're not gluten free. If come from Thailand, they're pretty much gluten free. But if you see the other brand that I use, I I I use specific brand, but I can't tell you now. So. It, the oyster salt, that what I use, they use specific plant. That I use a lot of maploy. Hey, uh, um, not maploy, um, maclure. So, pretty much before they used, you know, uh, tapioca flour to do aging. But some, from time to time, I see that they change the process. They have to put, oh, we add the wheat in there because the manufacturing uh, U.S. is asked if you have the wheat, you have to write it out or contain wheat, those kind of thing. You will see that, but it's, it's mild because it's for thickening. But the, the, the one that they sell in Thailand, I don't see that it, it, it come from tapioca, and they never mention about wheat anyway. So when you export, that what you have to write it down, so that what it, that what you see in that. And it's again, they come from uh, different size. You know, this is for, for the, the gallon. This is it come from, you know, for for the restaurants use. So usually if I keep them big size like this. And so, like this, big size. And uh, the small size like this when I start traveling or go somewhere a week or two, those kind of thing I take with me, I want to eat Thai food, I cook Thai food. Because sometimes, you know, I don't like to go to the restaurant and eat like a Dennis, uh, like McDonald's and all, like all the things. So I would rather carry my own food and do it that way. It, 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 uh, I don't have more trouble with you know, my body, because I don't want to eat junk. So I want to eat the real food, so I cook myself. So, about the curry, Thai curry, you know, it's, boy, 300, 400 uh, different kind of curry, you know, but, uh, you know, the white people that can handle, this is probably about, you know, 13 of them, that you 15, you throw two, four, five, you know, 10, 13, 14, but the white people can handle the letter with you can't. Even the Thai people can do it because it's a, they say it's called curly, but it, it it doesn't taste right to me. It's too spicy, too stingy, you name it. So pretty much the standard you, you see here, sticker, that, that what a lot of Thai people use them. And then when you, introduce it to the Frank, to the Westerner, so they can understand. But this is like this thing, the gang ring, you know, the, the Liang curly paste. Uh, I cook two, three times. None of my white people love it. They hate it because they don't like smell because it's had a, a trim paste on it. So that, that, that what it, it for, for Thai people with the goodie, but for the foreigners, they say, what the hell is that? <laughs> Sting, those kind of thing. That that what they don't do. You have to be careful. Usually that they do, you know, like the red curly, yellow curly, you know, mussaman curly, green curly, 
you know, an ang curly those type. That what they stick into it. But a lot more curly that more interesting. But but uh, you know, if you don't really know the Thai people, you never see it. You will see in the restaurant that pretty much limited. If you know more Thai people that they cook, that we do all kind of curly. They are different and interesting. So if you go to Thailand, this is how they sell the curly. That's why when people say, oh, chef, uh, how come you don't teach, you know, how to make the curly? I say, yeah, right. You know, we took you half day or a whole day just to make one kind of curly because the component inside the curly is a lot, you know. You have to chop, you have to slice, you have to pound, you know. But by the time they become this kind of paste, it takes you half of the day. Or the, and then you knew, not even know what it tastes like. So the better off to you to, 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 to buy it because the, all the people that make this, you know, they're professional. They've been there for 75 years. So if they don't, if they don't sell anything, they don't be there that long. Let the expert do the work and you learn how to use them effectively. That's the key. You know. All the less long everywhere that outside Thailand, everywhere in the world, even though in, in Thailand, you know, some fancy less long, they don't go buy this kind of curly unless somebody support supply to them. They use from the can like me, like this, you know, from the job. It's already really made. All you have to do is learn how to use them effectively and equally good because they're professional. So this is, this is what I would do and uh, want to indicate it to you, educate you. And another thing is the curly. Since because this is a raw ingredient, so they have to have the component of salt. It's about 30% of salt, 25 to 30% of salt within the curly paste itself because they have to preserve it. They pre-fry a little bit and they preserve it and they can it. So when you use it, Make sure don't put a lot of fish sauce in there or add more salt in there. Take your curly first, you know, because it's very salty. That then you, that's why you have to use the sugar to balance the taste. So if you take one of my class, you know, or see my cooking demonstration, I've always start doing several dish and show people what to do. So how to do them? Just if you follow my website follow me so you can see because my technique will be different from uh, the rest of the cooking demonstration people because I explain where the thing come from, how the thing work, what step and sequential, not just throw, oh you throw this in that, throw that, throw that in there and then voila, look good, taste good and how good it is, you know, you have to be able to look good, smell good, taste good and you have to be able to explain it. So, how good it is, what the taste looks like, simultaneously affect what you taste it first, which one come first, which one come last, and if your ingredient, you know, become soggy, you better be falling apart, the chicken doesn't cook, all kind of thing. So, you have to explain it to people at what color, when you put things, what is step and sequence, how you developing your dish. So this is a fundamental and, and, and really structuring to where the successful Thai cooking, if you take the class with me, okay? Here it is, the curly. Make sure you remember they have a lot of salt in there, 20 to 30 percent. Sometimes it's 35, depending on one of the curly, that they have so much ingredient in there. So be careful when you're balancing the taste. Don't try to put more fish salt and more salt in there. Get some people to guessing and throw it in there anyway, and then you become very salty. Then you don't taste anything. Everything salty, spicy, and salty, and that, that are good. You have to balance it. That or you have to put a whole cup of sugar in there. You still cannot, you know, balancing the taste because you overcharge with the salt. Just be careful with that. Okay. Awareness of stinched, stinging. Thai food had a lot of, like a, you can call it umami taste, those kind of thing, but this is like a 
for Thai they call it flavoring. So this is insect that have some kind of aromatics in there that what they put it in like a like a dipping sauce those kind of thing in some part of Thailand they eat the whole thing with that they eat with rice so they cook it they barbecue it and they eat it and it tastes good very aromatic and have some you know buttery taste in there that what you use and then you have to dry squid and they, if you see this is always stingy because it's a seafood that they you know uh, put the salt in there and then they dry sun dry and then they, and they flat it out this way and then you know you grill it you fry it and fry and this is a piece of fish the same thing you know it's thing everything is stingy here because of the uh, you know, preserving method that they use. The, like uh, this kind of tofu, they have, you know, very stingy tofu, like Chinese that we use, like called tofu yi. It, it, it's a Chinese version, it's all this stingy tofu, like uh, American, you know, the European, the white people, they have like a brie, they have like a blue cheese, but this is pretty much similar, have the same intense smell, intense flavor, but this is made from tofu. So, and then you have the fish that they preserve, fish they call pala, this is very stingy, and they preserve with uh, salt and uh, with uh, some kind of, you know, rice, the flour that they put in there. I can't eat it because I have allergy on it now because it is it, stingy and then if I eat I got a rash, the same thing when I eat beef. Oh, this is a trumpet. Trumpet, this is a trim this is another stingy one and then you have to, you know, trim uh, crab with egg, those kind of thing and then they preserve it within uh, fish sauce and all of it. It's, it's all equally stingy, but it's for preservative. If you keep them a lot longer, they, you can, for years, those kind of thing, they can keep for years. So Pidimat, the intense aroma with the trim paint, you know, fish sauce, fermented tofu, and what is it? Preserved meat, fish, seafood, dog, everything is preserved. Those Thai are always smelly, stingy, but it's really good flavor. But the Thai people, most of them, they don't mind. They like those kind of thing. When, when you combine with other thing else, it doesn't like a punching smell or intense smell or punching taste, dog, kind of thing. they don't have dog, kind of. that because it's a well, a good combination of ingredients. So sometimes they use that for uh, aromatic added to make extract into the juice and then you want that kind of umami flavor, you, you should drop it in there. So like, I, I see so all that, I say, no, I never try that. It's just kind of grotesque for me. Anyway, when that the, the, the serving method, you know, preserving, preserving method, Usually, it, uh, you know, in the water, the watery, you know, the, the, or soury or salty, you know, or sugary or oily or dry. That's how they preserve food. Everywhere in the world, they, one of these methods that they preserve their own food. But the Asian, you know, especially the South Asia, they had a lot of technique. Japanese, the same way to, to preserving the food. Chinese, Japanese, you know, all the Asian pretty much learn how to preserve the food and they all oh, years and years and years, thousands of years you did see the message that been written and people still using them. So in Thai cooking a lot of preservative food that we've been used to indicate with the cooking, like a open jar, like a you know a lot of, you know, Western cooking, the open jar, oh, already make this, already make that. But remember, everything it already made, it pretty much have preservative agent, you know. But in you want to be a natural, to do the natural preservative agent. I think in the last uh, presentation that I explained it to you, but I think you can go back to the, last sections 
so to see what is going on. If you go through all these nine sessions, you know, eight, eight video, you will learn everything about Thai food. And then the manufacturing floor. Manufacturing floor, you see a lot of it now. It come from Indonesia, come from Vietnam, come from all those things. So more of them, they will say, oh, sometimes they say, uh, make in Thailand, but we will say that the manufacturing is not in Thailand. So those kind of thing. But this is one of them, more likely you stick with the company. The company we tell where they have to tell where the product is made, right? And the make in Vietnam or make in Thailand like this, that was the requirement from the US when you do the import. So mostly you see this company, it's the same company, you know, the Thai accurate food, the same company, the same location, same email family, but did it product of Vietnam and did it product of Thailand. This is the same name, Alloy D. They all both the same, come from the same place. But when it comes to here, if they say product Vietnam, I think something uh, have something to do with, uh, you know, the way you import it. Because if you, this is the coconut milk. The coconut milk in Thailand, it has so much problem because the, the environment people or the politic people, they try to ban Thailand and then they just say, oh yeah, you uh, abuse the animal, you, you build the monkey, you use the monkey label to go blah, blah, but it, it been go on and on and on. Every time they ask Thai people to do things, government to do things, and they won't do the refusal, and then they play this kind of thing in there. And then this is another way that they sell it, this is product of Thailand, or product in Vietnam. So if you cannot come out directly from Thailand, they went to Vietnam and Vietnam come to the US. So now every part of Asian, you know, food, the PDMA, they bought the product from Thailand and then they go to their country and put the product of their country and then and they ship to everywhere in the world. So PDMA, Thailand is, have the good quality of export food. So people like to do that, especially the Vietnamese, they will come and buy all kind of things. And then they took it to, to Vietnam and then they repack it and they call make in Vietnam. So it's several noodles, several other kind of things because the Thailand have specific noodles that people that come from Tachu, come from the Hokkien, all the ethnic, another ethnic of, of Chinese food that they do different food and they locate it in Thailand and they make it in Thailand. Like a chantabu noodle that you do, you know, you do that uh, uh, the pad thai. Those kind of noodle you want because they have the specific, you know, sting in it, elastic, and when you fry, they're not falling apart, and they preserve it, and more than like they buy them from that, and then they take it to their country and they, they repack it and call make in Vietnam or make in Thailand, make in USA. All these kind of things that going on in the past for five years. Just be aware of it. If you, if you see manufacturing, you know, like, a, okay, oh, that is manufacturing in Thailand. This is manufacturing in Thailand, skin company, but the product of Thailand and product of Vietnam, is that possible? So you be the judge, but this is a lot of things coming in right now to several part of it, but mostly if you see the product like this, it's a product from Thailand, but they will see somebody else say, oh, oh, you bring out the product of Vietnam, you register the product of Vietnam, but it make in Thailand. So just be careful with that. This is a lot of it coming out because the, because the Thai people, Thai government, you know, we have difficulty export. But a lot of things that go from Thailand to Europe and have no problem. The one that come to the U.S. that had problem because of the politics, I think, that, that, that we have to deal with. And that, I think, how they get around. But some people make stories. They say, oh, yeah, these people, they used to have, uh, they used to own that. And they went to Vietnam. They married Vietnamese people. 
rubber and then they and they have manufacturing in there. But draw you to saying that this is uh, made in Thailand here. So you know the location that you produce. So I don't know how this thing all about, but nobody talk about it. So we don't know so just to be aware of it. If you want a little one, just read read the label. Okay. Sometimes product of Vietnam, product of Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, whatever it is, just lead the manufacturing. It is it, it, it where it comes from. This is the key. This is the key to tell you all oh, that the part really really the product of Thailand. If they say oh make in blah blah blah, you know, the, and you don't see, you know, the address especially, they have to locate it where it made. So this is the same address. 1551, 1551, it's the same location, but a different sticker. You get a pick. So just a lot of the according manufacturing floor, it's a lot of it. But some, they do have the fake one too, because I don't know how it went through, and it's called the same thing, you know, but the, sometimes they say, oh, I. this is the, another brand that they do. It's, it's just the word a little bit different, the sticker, different. You know, even though in Thailand we found them, you know, the, the especially the fish sauce, you see the, the sticker, it weaker label and the layout almost similar, like a, you scan it and then you go into the computer and do some more editing, those kind of thing, and then when you print it out, they're not the, exactly the same. It's just that the color is, it, 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 it lay, it lay it bright, those kind of thing. It's just, it's just a lot more of that problem. Just try to get make in Thailand, product of Thailand, and where it's located. Like I think you're better off. So just leave the label. If you can use any product, if you're fake and not fake, but you know, if you got a little one, then you can control, you know, balancing the tape and you can predict your food will come out good. That's just at all about manufacturing fraud. It's a big thing now. It's it spread out everywhere because there are competitions between the blood of, you know, people in the family or among the other people or the cheater, that kind of thing. There's so many. Okay? Just be careful. That, that, that is, just be aware of these excess. And then the fresh ingredient. You know, fresh ingredient in Thailand, if you go to Thailand, try to go to the market. Don't wear the high heel though. <laughs> don't wear the good shoe. Just get the and don't wear the slipper. You know you could get the or you see dirty clothes. If you go to some market, they have the rubber boot. You go in there and buy it or just borrow them and give them some money and then they will bring it back. Those kind of thing. They will let you do it. You walk because the floor is always wet. You know they're not. Uh, they they're not the organized because this is a you know, people put the food on the street, on the ground with the, all these baskets and everything. It's a lot more fun. You will see all this food that they end up in the restaurant. So that's what you eat. So some some they do, if you do street food, that's what they bought it from. The, the kind of thing. If you do the restaurant food, they go a little bit higher scale, you know, more fancy, the, the dialect uh, supply, that kind of thing. So, but you will learn a lot more how, what, what kind of people eat, what kind of food. Just take one morning, you go, you will see a lot more people. And especially in the, in the morning part, you have a lot of good food you know, already made. You can buy, eat, sit, and eat. Uh, it's so much fun. So, that the fresh ingredient is the key, whatever you do in Thai cooking. Okay, and get you learn where it is, what it is, that is good, that good. And then we use Thai, they use a lot of pork, you know, and every part of the pork, they can create some dish of, you know. You can, depend on how they slide, depend on what they use, they chop the food, they slide the big piece, they slide small piece, you know, any cut, anything they do. Because it's cheap meat, expensive meat, they can do anything. And they eat the whole pig too, the same like every, like Mexico, like everybody else. So every part of it is uh, it, 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 it eatable, intestine, you, know, you name it. So it, it, it's a cut of pork, but because pork is cheap. So, and 
they have so many farm, pig farm in Thailand, so then they, they sell them cheap. And then uh, that's another one that we have a problem with uh, outside when they try to bring the pork in and the Thai reject them and then we get uh, punishing by it because here they're well controlled, they don't do the dye, the, the red dye they inject into to make the pork, uh, the big, the red meat become really red. So because the pork itself is not really red meat, they got slightly pink. So anyway, that when you do, we have the pork, you cut, you roll, you fry, those kind of things, they're all different. But in Thailand, make no difference, they use everything to do everything. So. Even though they use the pork feet, they just strip it out, slide it out, all those skin and slice the peat like that, and they do stuff fire with it to blow you away. So they eat everything. So, and then a lot of beef, so we don't eat that much beef, but a lot of people we do, you know, the dry meat, the cut, slice, those kind of things. They grill them like a partially cooked, and they make a salad out of it. Those kind of things, or they do them partially cooked. And they make the salt out of it, like a isan salt, those kind of things that is spicy, you know, intense flavor, and eat with meat is really good. So that is all the cut the same, pretty much the same thing. The people eat the whole thing the same way. So, but they don't eat the nail though. <laughs> I don't see anybody doing it. They eat the whole ox, you know, oxtail is very expensive in Thailand because they make special soup. You no, know, it, it, it's like, it's like sauce, you know, right? You know, like, it, it's right. <laughs> Light blast, you know, and but spicy, it is really good to make. It's like a stew, but not stew, it's a soup. But they, they, they eat with, you know, the rice dish, those kind of thing that especially the, the, they call it, what you call it, the yellow rice dish. The, the, okay. What it what it called uh, is not kaman guy. It is some other fried rice that they do. Uh, other yellow lights. Uh, that that what they eat for. This is this is a soup. So I forget the name. So it will come back to me when I go to the next one. Let's see. I go. So and then you have the poultry. You know, like poultry. You have chicken. You have turkey. You have not too many turkey people, the Thai people didn't like it that much because it doesn't have flavor like chicken. But duck anytime, goose, duck, you know, geese, duck, chicken, and some kind of bird that they raise them, you know, those kind of thing. But it's pretty much standard chicken and duck that they do in Thai cooking, it's a lot of it, you know, like that. One of the dishes, the Penang Road duck, is very good. Or because the duck is already been cooked, and then, you know, like a roasted, and then you cut, slide it, and you make curly up, that kind of thing. It, it, it makes another level. You know, the bait juice of the duck is to, to, to cook that way, okay? Pretty much protein, that is pretty much the same. Then you have the goat and sheep. You go to the south. This is where the Muslim people that they won't eat pork. They will eat this kind of thing. It's not common in 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 Thailand because if you go to the restaurant that make it, it's expensive because of the uh, the way it cook. It take a lot more involved and a bit gamey for the Thai people if they got used to it. So, most likely they sell to specific people, but not too much. A lot of people won't eat them because it's just, it's a gamey, you know. And that's why it's not common, it's uh, goat and cheap. So, it's not Thai favorite, so. Now, the crocodile, that's what we're talking about, this is the goody. Because now it's really, really famous in Thailand right now because every part of Thailand, they raise the crocodile for meat and the skin. So they eat just about the whole body of the, 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 the animal 
because uh, you see that, that every part that it, it had the meat you know, they managed to scrabbage I mean scratch uh, gathering and then they make some dish of it but mostly they do barbecue so the most expensive one is here the fillet this part of the you know underneath the, the inside here of the uh, crocodile that's the most expensive so this, this is this caught you a lot more. So this is the way they prepare them. They just after they clean it, either they do barbecue like this and skewer, or they barbecue the whole thing. So and it's really good. I think the whole crocodile one meter, you know, it's about three or four thousand baht, you know, like one hundred US dollar, somewhere there. So it's really common. You go. You go in a big party, fancy people, they love to have one of those barbecue and then they, you know, they, because some of them, they way out, not in the city, they have to order a hit and they will send it to your party. And that caught that much with the delivery, so those kind of thing. That's the party that they, you know, some kind of exotic thing, something, ooh, yeah, cocktail or that kind of thing. It's fun, but it, for me, I don't eat them that much because it's just kind of, okay, <laughs> I would like to eat pork. So this is another exotic ingredient, you know, in Thailand, they eat just about anything, you know, especially if you go to northeastern, like close to the Laotian, we eat a lot more exotic thing. So like this, like this is the baby frogs. This is their favorite. They they do they do a lot of dish on it. So they eat, they, they scoop the whole thing in there, and then they put in there, and they make curly, they make soup, they make all kinds. Of and the frog and the snake, they eat you know, pretty much egg. And this is a lot of worm, eat, like a silk worm. So they eat them. So I don't eat any of these. I don't eat them. So, and this one, you know, this is the crab that in the summer season after the, you know, they have a lot of buttery taste in there. I don't eat these things at all. And all they, they have, you know, animal, they, they have animal in there inside the egg. They cook it like balloon in the Filipino, you know, they call balloon. It have chicken inside, the Cambodia and the Thai, the Northeast, and they eat that. The turtle, turtle is less now, people don't do that because it is pretty much a lot of Chinese people like to do that, but then now it's just the Thai, is, they wash it with it, so they don't eat that much. This is a rat, this is a right rat, not the rat from house, you know, people how no. This is a right rat that will come once a year when the rat, before the rat have it, before the right have it in the right, they come to eat rice. This is rat rice, rat rat rice that uh, they will kill them and they sell them everywhere. And the skill you go, you drive a car in the middle of the road, you will see where in the you know when the harvest time, you will see all they uh, they sell rat uh, roasted. This is a lot of them, but I never eat them. I don't. It's for me cortez, but a lot of people eat them. And they have, you know, this is like a, you know, the lizard, that certain kind of lizard that they eat. And this is the most, the one that I go blew me away. This is the skin of the cow skin, you know, a cow or buffalo skin. So that what they use is they eat with it. So they cook with it a little bit. It's salty. They put it in the water a little bit soft, and then they eat it with the sticky right. I say, oh, wow, that, I can't even handle it. This is a core exotic ingredient. The only thing I eat is egg ant from time to time, but not a lot. The less I want. So it's a lot of exotic ingredient. If you travel out of Thailand and the ant, you see something that is not look like chicken, look like it. Ask question, you will know if you want to eat or you don't want to eat. But well, usually it tastes good, but it's just the exotic ingredient that will probably turn you away. Preserved food.
in Thailand, they have a lot of canned food, a lot of food that they preserve because it's a lot of, you know, the agricultural product that come out, they have to preserve them because they can't use them, you know, each year is, is a lot. So they have to do the packaging. So pretty much everything you do, packaging is have it either add preservative in there to make sure that the, you know, the food not get spoiled. So what you do is when you use them like, you know, uh, bamboo jute like this is uh, uh, already prepped, already cooked for you. And then they put, uh, you know, in the water and have some preservative in there. When you're going to use them, you open the can like this and lint them a little bit with the warm water first and then put the cold water in there and let it soak a little bit and, and then uh, drain it out. Or you can wash it out with a hot water and cold water. You know, hot, not hot water, warm water and cold water. Because the warm water, you help open it up, your, the pores of the, you know, the surface of the ingredient and then it, whatever the chemicals sticking in there and they, they root it up and they go out the preservative. So, and then you lint it in the cold water one more time or soak it a little bit more and then you drain it out and you're ready to use. And uh, something like it, uh, like a tamarind, like this, since you're going to cook them anyway, so you don't need to wash them because it, it's, it's like a, it's like a dilute paste, you know, have water in it. And then you have all these kind of vegetable, mostly the can that they do vegetable, is, uh, you know, the, the already cooked, you know. If you do the same, uh, if you, if the fruit, they mostly they preserve with sugar and salt, so they can last longer, but they put in the, can then they still have to have chemical in it, you know, the, the, you know, preservative. But most of the time, you can eat them, it's good, but you don't eat them a lot too, <laughs> because you don't want anything that, you know, packaging like that, it have a preservative in there. And if, you know, the product chills about two years, or a year and a half to two years, Sometimes you bought them three years later and then you it, it start because it's a thin, thin, you know, metal, you know, steel metal, tin metal, whatever they do, it, they will get that uh, oxidation. You will see when you pour it out, we see all those kind of oxidation. So most of the time when they see that, I watch it and then I cook them a little bit like vegetable, like not cook them, but just brunch it with the hot water and then make another, you know, some sweet side up, whatever they put in there and eat. So if I don't see the corrosion, then okay. But more likely when I, if they have too much, I throw it away. I said, even though, you know, the shelf life two years, but I don't know how much temperature abuse, you know, those kind of thing. Manufacturing process, flaw, those kind of thing. So if you use like the, the chili garlic paste, if when you open it, so close it, when you finish, close it and put it in the refrigerator. Don't leave it outside after you put it because it, uh, it will start fermenting, you know, if, if, if it's getting hot. So you see like too much, too many manufacturing, everybody do a coconut milk, right? And what Thailand always have the problem with the politic problem and then they ban Thai. And the Thai who sell number one in the, in the world is sell, you know, like a mere ploy, like a chow god, because it's, the, the coconut from Thailand is one among the best really for cooking. So they sell a lot, then they have a lot more problem. And every time there's some politic chain, they get into that. Uh, according to the politics and preventing, oh, you can't import that, blah, 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 you know, get sanctioned. So, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, you're going to sell it and then they fight the system, blah, blah, and then you sell, you not sell, you sell, not sell. Now, because for me, I bought it by Cape. 
So it would last longer because it, it, was, it would stay, you know, as long as you not open them. So sometimes it, for me, if it, it not, it not for sale at home, I use them sometimes, you know, you see, oh, it expired already a year, that kind of thing, but it's still good for me because I have to cook them anyway. So I use it, but I cannot use that in the, in the restaurant because it will cause problems. If they get caught, then you, you use uh, something expire. That's not good. Your name go out. You then you uh, if the get caught by the government, then you screw. So to make sure what you do, but it's usually the manufacturing expire. Um, practically they not encourage people to use it, but it this is up to you. It's your call. But for me, I do it. So because. I have to cook that is anyway. So if you open it out and you see the mold in there, something different. If you see it, 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 uh, it the, you know the the can is swallowing, you know that kind of thing. That is already long gone. You know if you see some hole, something it's just it's not good. It's still in the good condition, sticker the good because sometimes it's sitting on the shelf. They they can't sell them and sit there for two years, three years, so kind of thing. But lately in the U.S., no, it's, it, the rotation is pretty good. But in Thailand, they have so many variety of it. But you can have them fresh too. You go to the market, or you can buy it in can, or you can buy it in the paper jar. I mean, paper box, stuff kind of thing. So and uh, preservative now it's good. They don't use uh, MHG that much. They use something else. So. Some they do MHG there, but the MHG is not a chemical process, it's a fermentation process, it's totally different. So anyway, and then you will see all the packaged food that you can go with every, you know, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, store, those kind of thing, they're all common. So this is what they're talking about, you know, the hot candy, that they call the brown candy, this is the brown sugar. That they add the uh, sugar cane in there. This is a little palm sugar. It's soft. You have to put it in a jar there. So it is different. This is a real one. It's pure. This is adding sugar. And then the coconut, you know, pretty much you will see it here it's a lot. Uh, smaller size, bigger size. But in Thailand, they come about that size for cooking. The smaller size, pretty much, it's for, you know, for the the juice, so and uh, chili, you know, it come from every part of the world. If you make sure you eat it, Thai chili, Thai chili is spicier. It is pretty much like Mexican uh, chili, but it, it, it have more longer lingering taste. So and you can have you know the the coconut milk in like a powder, like you have to put a hot water in there. This is good for traveling. But it doesn't give you more aromatics, but they give you a buttery. But most of the time, they don't put the real coconut that they, you know, dry. They mix with some flour in there. That's why I, I don't like that, that that much. But I will use them to do like a curly when I go camping or something. I take something like that. It's lighter. So it's is many, many, many pretty common ingredients. Now you just take a look at it. If you have my cookbook, so at the back of the book, it has uh, every ingredient that available in the U.S., especially in the Northern California. So that's where the book is coming from. So if you can Google it, this kind of thing, that kind of thing, but it, it sometimes take four or five things to eat. Better take the book and you can compare the note and read it, understand it. So. Anyway, let's go to the next one. It, this is about the salt and the condiment. If you go to the Thai supermarket, you know, you see a lot of condiment and salt and everything. You got to know what it is. And then they're not expensive. You know, $1, $2, $3, the more, three fifty. So if you try to buy online, they charge you $5, $6, $7, those kind of thing. They, because this is a shipment. So, you know, all these 
the condiment and the pickling and the special sauce is available everywhere online. You know, you, you can buy it online. If you go to the Asian store, you more likely can have it. Now, Safeway have a lot of things. Yes, Safeway have fish sauce, Safeway have uh, coconut milk, have soy sauce, and all kinds. Some, from time to time, you have the lemon glass. You, you know, ginger is normal, that kind of thing. They, you will see the exotic. They will hold chunk. If a lot of big stores, they will have a chunk of Asian market. So you go in there, you find some Thai product in there. So it's a lot of things that they, like uh, they have one other company that they do fish sauce, they call it six, seven dollars. Just for me, it's outrageous, it's not that good either. So I bought something like this, you know, like a dollar, dollar twenty-five, you know, this small size of the squid brand. So just, just if you go to the market, it's better off. Actually, you have the Asian community. Everybody carries the Thai products, and you can use it. You know, you know, like a be aware of it. You can get the hand of Thai product. It's good. Like if you Chinese product, it turned to be salty. Like especially the oyster sauce. If you have oyster sauce Thai and oyster sauce Chinese and taste it, you will see the totally different. Because the Thai, the, the Thai oyster sauce is more, you know, balanced, more flavor. If the Chinese is salt, a lot of salt and a lot of aromatic, like, because it's too much of the soy sauce and whatever they put in there. It's totally different taste and mainly salty in, in Chinese oyster sauce. Just be aware of it. If you use any of those, just taste it first. You know how salty it can be, and how much you're going to use it. You're going to reduce it down if you use, like, a, a call for one tablespoon. You know, you just do the half tablespoon first, and use your tongue to be your measurement the palate to taste. You know, you want to detect all the taste, and then based on what it is your palate. Is. So, for me, I, I can can smell it, I can see the color, when I taste it, pretty much light on it, so good. because it's skilled, you, you cook a lot of it, and how much the thing you put in there, just, just, just skill, simultaneously effect, or those kind of thing, it is in your head. In my cooking class, it's what I do, when I do the demo, people go, wow, you don't have to do much, you just throw in there, and I say, I say everything is approximation for me. Because I know how much water in there, how much water content content in there, how much you know uh, the ingredient is in there. So how much sugar I need, how much you know fish salt I need, how much spice I need. Talk kind of thing. I pretty much know. I cook the way I eat. That's the main key. You know when you do cook thing after you learn the basic, the fundamental, then then you cook the way you eat. That's what. It develop in your own skill, and then you do, oh, okay, I did this. You know, then you can compare notes with other people, did the way I do it. So, the same ingredients, same in the but the taste is different because this is the way I like. This is uh, different. But the main thing, learn the fundamental, how to do them correctly. And then after that, you will be a great cook. The Thai food is really, really good. You are really healthy. Okay, and very flavorful and very simple to cook. Anyway, just to recap for you, this is all the ingredients, you know, not all the ingredients are alike because every ingredient is different. If same manufacturing, call the same thing, but every year is different. So slightly this, slightly that, because when they try to adjust to where they adjust to consistency, but not the taste, not the flavor, because you don't think really difficult to control. It's, it have to come from the ingredient. Whatever the in, ingredient gave it to them, that what they have to stick with it, and then they just allow a little bit, and then they pack it, and they call it the same thing. Okay? And then like herb and spice, Thai curry, you know, Thai of sugar, Sour fish sauce, you know, sourly taste, those kind of thing. The choice of ingredient is, is 
nothing the same. That's why you your palate to be your control guy. You you have to your, your control point to where okay you understand your palate can understand tasting the detecting the taste tasting the taste do the way you like. Just remember, not all ingredients are alike. So you cook the same thing, you call the same thing, but this year and that year they are different. So the next section is going to be cooking technique. That is going to be a fun one that you can see how the Thai food develop when you start cooking. This is how it works. What is you supposed to do? Not just, oh, I put this, put that, oh, this, that, and I'll take it out. Okay. No, it's step and sequential how you do them and how long it takes. When the color change, when you do this, when you do that, those kind of things we're going to talk about in the next session, okay? If you want to send any inquiry, your special cooking class, you you know, want me to go into education lecture to any place to do the education for people, let me know. So the, my email, or you can go to my website and my in inquiry whatever you want me to do now, I'm free to do it now. So I don't know less wrong anymore, so now I have more time. So I cook more, I, I teach more class, so I would like to teach more people to know how to cook Thai food to take care of themselves. Okay? And the Zoom hand-on cooking class is going to be come up pretty soon after I finish this all section I will Learn to do the Zoom, and then we're going to do the same format. I, you know, but even though I cannot eat your food, smell your food, taste your food, but I can see what you do. I can tell by the color. I can tell by the technique. The, you know, I tell you technique. What I do in my format, in my Zoom format, I explain and I go do the demo for you, and then give you the structure, what the fundamental of it, in detail. And then this is what it should taste like. Then on your side, you start doing it. And then you have the question. You can raise your hand. Then I could zoom it to your screen. And you can show me what are you doing in doing that you're cooking. So if you overcharge your runway, how you pull it back or, you know, before you start, okay, what I supposed to do, what is I supposed to do. So you turn to be forget because you will see it simultaneously, but I go this by this, I go this, this, finish. Everybody finish that this, and then you go to the next day, we do the same thing, repeat the same thing. So you're gonna be about two or three dishes, about two, two and a half hour long for the cooking, my cooking session. This is not the demo. You know, I not a demonstration class like, oh, shoot this, shoot that, shoot that, oh, it's good, how good it is. You can't explain, people cannot do it, cannot follow what you do. So for me, I do, you have to do, follow the, in, the, 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 the uh, presentation that I put in there and I, my video series so you understand how the whole thing all about to put the frame in your head. Oh yeah, that's what the Thai cooking is all about. So, and then when you see in my demo, you will start making sense because it's just start the thing, put it together and you see it. By the way, it's how to handle and have sequential and explain what to do, what not to do, how the step work, those kind of thing. So it's more hand-on than just cho. You know, you know what I mean? It's different. Because I this is I this is derived from my cook my normal cooking class. I keep presentation first to educate people and then I open up that party by cooking the demonstrations for food dish. So and everybody see it, smell it, and they have to taste all my food and then they have to give me Feedback, evaluation, okay. What is it you are really testing? Did I, this is what you see, we put sugar in there, you put salt, you put it, put that. And this is a control point, sour, salty, buttery, and lingo. That is simultaneously effect. So 
do you understand that? And then you can you take that if you don't? So take it again and, you know, you can adjust it, those kind of thing to where, okay, this is what I take. When you got the first did done, the second dish is easy, the third dish is easy. You know, most, mostly in my formal class, I do four different fundamental cooking, Thai cooking. You know, but a different in different this every time I do. So you're going to have involve curly, stir fry, right? Salad and soup. So it's going to be four fundamental. But in the soup cooking, going to be two or three. You got a four. You take too long. But if you have time, you can add four in there. But you have to own ingredient. We're going to have to take a look what dish we're going to teach. And if you have requests. So just send the request and you sign up and, you know, the request, but I will set it up, you know, to where this specific plot and this is what specific dish is all about. So when the Zoom coming in, then we start talk, chatting a little bit, capture whatever you learn, or whatever you want to know, and then I do demo and then you cook, I do demo and then you cook. By the time two, two and a half hours, we got two or three days to eat, you get two or three days to eat and then you understand how the thing works. So most likely all my students walk out happy because they see it, they smell it, they're doing it themselves because I give them ingredients they already prepped and this is you following me, doing this in class with your group, your friend or whoever. But the soup class is the good part. Is we will sell it by window, you know, by, by screen, you know, by slot. So I, the maximum is 24, you know. If in your slot, you can cook with your friend, your whoever, that your own thing, right? That means you learn together at all at once, and then we see it, no kind of thing. But you pay only one price, and they're not expensive. I don't, I don't, I don't do that much expensive too. To do that with my normal cooking class is a hundred twenty dollars, so per person, this is your per family, whatever is not going to cost that much. So more likely, it's, you know, forty five, thirty five, depend. Sometimes probably twenty, depend on the ingredients or how lengthy you to be. So, but it, that it what it I try to do is a little bit cheaper, and then we do cooking demonstration to where the, you know. It requires like you do hand on, I like start from the scratch or kind of thing. So then I will ask, you know, from the donation, whatever you want to keep, that kind of thing. Because I will do a lot of demo for that, that way you can do, you know, 20, 30, 50 people, no problem. You get to Zoom and you lock in, you can see it. But if you fill the window, then you cannot go to all people. But that what we want to do, so, and then go to bed on, you know, either you want to donate it to give it for the next class you're going to do, because you're going to pay for the, I have to pay for the ingredient, you got it, you know, so it pretty much, you know, exchange a little bit of that, so then I can get the website, continue with website and doing all those kind of thing, the fun thing. So anyway, you got more information about cooking, you go to the Thai Essence under uh, cooking tab. So we see all the video and a lot more involved, a lot of Thai cooking, a lot of ingredients, blah, blah. If you have a question, you can email me or send me a note or comment under the, you know, this video. Uh, let me know so then I will go back to you and answer your question. So. Let's see how it goes. This is if you don't never had uh, have seen any of my videos. So this is a little bit of my uh, uh, portfolio. So you can see that, and then I will get ready for the next video. Okay. See you later. Thank you for watching. I could let the video video run. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully, this video entice you. If it did, please share. You can follow us at thaiessence.com. T H A I E S S E N C E dot com. Or on, on the Facebook at Kunpan, K H U N P H A N T. At, at Kunpan on, on the Facebook. And the YouTube is Classical Thai Cooking by Japan. See you on the next video. Have a pleasant day. Until then, Kapan Kap.